Welcome back. We are here again with Danny Boylan, the chef founder of CE Saute and now the author of An Inappropriate Amount of Butter. And we are actually cooking. So as you know, I've not been in person with anyone interviewing for a very long time. And this is so exciting, not just to be interviewing an amazing human being, but to be in a kitchen doing it. So we're just gonna have some fun. I'm looking forward to it. Well, I'm glad you are. I'm a little bit terrified, but I'm trusting you will guide me. <laughs> I'm here to be the assistant, not the chef. No, you're going to do most of the work. I, well, I'm, I'm all over that. So okay. we are making, tell us what we're making. We're going to start by making Barbara's salad. Who is Barbara? Barbara's an old friend of mine. And she, I did all of the, a lot of demo dinners in her kitchen when I was starting out because her kitchen could be charitably described as sparse. Okay. So if I could do it in her place, I could do it there. And this is a dish that started as an inspiration from one of our dinners out. And it's been modified and modified and modified over the course of- And uh, you've made yeah. it your own and now yeah. you're sharing it with us. Absolutely. I'm excited, let's go. We're gonna start by making a Parmesan Frico bowl. Okay, I don't is, even know what that is. <laughs> it's, we're gonna bake Parmesan on a silicone mat and then we're going to shape it on this bowl so that the the bowl for the salad will be Parmesan itself. Oh, like a Parmesan nest. Yes. Excellent. Sort of. Wow, I've yeah. always wanted to know how to do that. It always looks like magic to me when they appear out of a kitchen. And that's the thing that we try to do in, in, as chefs generally, but also with this book. Uh, if you're familiar with finances, you've heard of PE ratio. It's a price earnings ratio. In kitchen terms, however, and in the terms of this book, PE ratio for me means pop to effort. So this has a huge pop, very little effort. So that makes it a great, great dish. So we're going to start by spreading out some Parmesan, just like that. But you're going to do a whole lot more. So okay. keep, start in the center and then keep going out. And don't be shy with it. So this is like an inappropriate amount of cheese. Is that what I'm after? I, I don't think there's an inappropriate amount of cheese. <laughs> just like I don't think there's an inappropriate amount of butter either. Okay. There is no such thing as inappropriate. Yep. I love that. Okay. Just keep going out just a little, make it a little bit wider. Yeah. Okay. Now, does it need to be the same thickness all the way out, or does that matter? Uh, it's helpful if it is, but okay. it's not going to matter. There. So, we're good there. Yeah, we're yep. good. I feel like I've got a couple of holes here. Okay, we're good now. The holes are the holes will fill up, but also if you have a few holes, it's part of the beauty of it. Okay. Perfect. I believe in the, I believe in imperfections. So Ooh. we're going to put this into a 375 degree oven. Perfect. So kind of perfectly imperfect. And we're going to set a timer for seven minutes and 10 seconds. Hey, folks, if you have never seen this and if you actually cook or just need multiple timers for any reason, check out this app. Whose is it? It's called Multi-Timer. And it gives you unlimited timers on your phone and you can tell it what it's for and what time to ring. And if you've never seen it, I just thought this was super. Yeah. Okay. So while this is happening, while the butter, while the while the cheese is baking off, we're gonna do two things. One, we've already identified our shaping bowl. That's the bowl that we're gonna to use to shape the, the, the Parmesan. We put a, a dull knife so it won't cut the silicone right beside it so that we can just lift it off. Now we're gonna get everything else for the salad ready. I've already cut the bacon into lardons. I've always had bacon in my refrigerator because it takes the same amount of time to, to make two strips as it does to make 20. So might as well have that there. And how do you, a lardon is just a slice? Strip of bacon. A strip. Okay. It's chef word for strip. Yeah. Got it. Got it. We're good. Can't help ourselves sometimes. That's all right. Okay. I will ask all the questions because I'm the one who needs to know. All right. We've got some olive oil going on medium heat. We're going to cook the tips of asparagus just enough to get the raw off of it. Okay. So mm -hmm. I've got asparagus here yep. in case you can't see it on the camera. I do. I'm holding okay. them in my hand. And so you're going to show me how to properly cut them? Yes. Okay. All right. There you go. So I'm going to work from the other side so you can learn okay. how to cut. I'm left handed, side. so it's always oh, annoying to so people. Am I. Are you? Yes, absolutely. I knew I loved you, especially. It had to be a reason, right? <laughs> We're the only we ones in our job. right mind. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. So what you want to do is coil your fingers here. Mm -hmm. And this protects you so you can never, so you won't cut yourself. Sure. Hold your knife right about there. That's a serious knife. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so mm, nice and easy. Okay. We're gonna put our 
things we're not going to use, we'll put that in our thank you for coming bowl. Okay. Saves us from having to go to the trash every time we need to throw something away. Perfect. So just cut the tips off the asparagus one. Okay. About, uh, about an inch long? About an inch long, yeah. Okay. Curling my fingers back, cutting tips, just tips. Did I, did, did I screw more. it up already? One more. No, that's perfect. Okay. Perfect. We're all done. That's it? That's it. What do you do with the rest? We're going to save that to make stock with it. Oh, okay. We make a stock with it. And you can also, there's also an asparagus and bacon cheddar soup in the book that you would use to make that with. All right. Yeah. So we're just going to toss these in our pan that's already going. And heat. And we'll put just a little bit of salt. Pepper. And we're going to turn that down now because again, all we're trying to do is cook off the raw. Okay. Overcooked asparagus is a really, really sad thing. True. I mm. ate many overcooked asparagus as a child. Yeah. So now we're going, we've got our bacon warming up right here. You can put this in the microwave if you want. I'm doing it on, on the stove top, heat, right? On yeah. low heat right okay. now. Now we're going to make our salad dressing. This okay. is super quick salad dressing. We'll come together. We're going to melt some honey so that we can mix it in and melted honey gets super liquidy really fast and it makes it easier to, to melt in. Right here we've got three ounces of Dijon mustard. Is this our honey? Oh no. Nope, that's our honey there. Oh, that's the honey already in the yeah. mouth. Okay. But go ahead and pick up what you had because that, okay. that is a tablespoon of soy sauce. Right. In, in there? the bowl. Yep. Okay. Next one. Is... That's a teaspoon of, I'm sorry, that's, that was a teaspoon of soy sauce. Okay. This is a teaspoon of liquid smoke. Oh, okay. Yep. And then? That's garnish for us. That, those are candied uh, chipotle cashews that we'll put on the salad layer. All right, I'm sorry. I just need you to taste should. that. Yeah, I need to. Okay, ready? Yeah. Recipe also in the book. Oh my God, don't tell my dentist. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing about about salads and constructing salads is you're always trying to balance uh, textures and flavors. And with a candied, a candied chipotle cashew, you get a spicy element, mm -hmm. you get a sweet element, you get a crunchy element, all in one thing. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Just, I, I would sit and eat a bowl of those. That would be a problem. <laughs> the, the recipe for this and is in the book and the recipe for this is in the book as well. Okay. And this is under the quick hits and eagles cooking because it's so easy to make. See so yeah, how we've got our honey bubbling up a little bit right now? Got it. I'm going to take three tablespoons. All right. So is this the kind of thing that you could kind of play with your proportions and just do it to yes. taste if you, like you don't have to be sweeter, so exact. Exactly. Yeah. If you like it a little sweeter, you want to highlight the smoke flavor on it, you can absolutely change it up a little bit. So go ahead and stir that up together. Okay. I can do that. This is a very funny, funky little stirrer thing. I used to make my own smoked mustard mm -hmm. and it took seven days because it takes hours <laughs> to smoke the mustard seeds mm -hmm. and then it has to soak with uh, vinegar and all other spices. And then one day I forgot to make smoked mustard. And so I did this just as a quick cheat. And I was like, oh, that's it's, so much it's, easier. It's easier and it's just as good. Okay. It's about 99% as good. Go ahead and taste that. Oh my God. So when we used to do TV, when we used to do studio uh, shoots and cooking, we always talked about smell vision Now I wish we had smell vision for you guys. This is insane. All right. I am going to taste this. Hang on. Because I can. Yes. Mmm. That is delicious. Yeah. I'm taking the bullet for you guys, really. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just here to be the taster. Wow. Okay. So now what else are we putting? No, I, ma in I made a batch earlier and put it in a squeeze bottle. Put it in squeeze bottles because it's easier to get the right portions around the greens. So we're going to set this aside. You can take this home. There are benefits to this job. <laughs> All right. We're starting with arugula. Just, yes, my favorite salad green. Mine too. It's got some nice pepper to it. And again, about <laughs> balance. Oh, that's our There's timer. Our timer. Okay. Oop, it's cheesy time, kids. Okay. We're going to let it go just a little bit okay. longer. We're going to let it go about 20 seconds longer. Okay. All right. So now we're here with our greens. And so we're just going to start around 
in circles. So just a little, it's really we're a starting, little We're bit, starting right? with a little bit because there's no salad dressing that has enough uh, uh, salt content to obviate the need to actually salt your greens. Okay. So we're starting with a little bit. We'll mix this up and then the little bit of salad dressing on here will enable the salt to stick to the to the arugula oh, cool. and same with the fresh pepper that we're going to do. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I never thought about it needing a sticker. Yes, it's a little binding agent. Yeah, binding agent. That's yeah. what you call it. So I'm going to grab some tongs here. Okay, why don't you go ahead and toss that together? I can do that. Because I take another look at our eat cheese. a lot of salad greens. Okay. All right. Good? Yep. Okay, now what? Okay, now we're just going to add a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. A lot of bit of pepper. Oh, a lot of bit of pepper. Depends how much pepper you like, but yes. a lot of bit of pepper. Okay. Somewhere, some, somewhere, some restaurant along the way, someone got the idea to add, would you like pepper on your salad as a table side thing? Uh -huh. No, I don't want pepper on my salad. I want the kitchen to do it properly the first time. <laughs> I want the pepper to be correct there. Okay. So that's a thing that I, yeah. I understand. Me, so let's toss, toss that, again. that up again. Yep. Okay. We're going to do that. Okay. Oh, lovely. Our cheese is just about perfect. Okay. So now once you take the roll, the tray with the melted cheese mm -hmm. and you need to, obviously it's bubbling so nobody can even touch that. It's not just, it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to shape right now. So we're okay. gonna let that cool for a couple of minutes. And then once it's cool, we'll, we'll use our knife here to pick it up by the edges and place it on top of our bowl to create a shape for it. Okay. So, okay, what am I doing with this now? Okay, well, now, now she tastes your salad. Oh, really? Is it salty enough? Is it peppery enough? Did you have enough? Uh... I'm not sure. Let's find out. Yeah, let's see what you did. Okay, let's see what I did. How are we doing now? It's lovely. Does it need more dressing? It might need more dressing. Okay. If that's the only dressing it's going to get, yep. then yes, it might need more dressing. Now, here's the thing. There's, no thing. there's nothing in cooking, no dish in cooking, where it's more important to understand that you can always add more. Mm -hmm. You can never take it out. Right. <laughs> So salad dressing is one of those things. Once it's overdressed, it's overdressed. You know what? I say that about fashion too. But on the way out the door, you should take off a piece or two. So yes, I understand yes. that on the salad, I really can't take it off. Mm, very nice. Okay. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. We're still a little bit too melty to, to transfer over. Okay. But let's, let's talk about the other things that are going into the salad. We have... Some cubed up gorgonzola. Okay. And once we start assembling the salad, we're gonna put all the toppings on top instead of instead of mixing them all in through, through uh, into the bowl, because otherwise all the toppings wind up at the bottom of the bowl. Right. And the person who gets the last bit of salad is a disproportionate and unfair amount of toppings. That's true, so, but they get no greens. Yes, so, exactly. All right. So yeah. that's and so do you. Do you um, assemble it in the in the parmesan in the parmesan cup? Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect, excellent. So greens in the bowl. Greens in the bowl. Okay, greens in the bowl. All, some, most, mm, that's fine. Enough. Yeah. Okay. You always make a little bit more than you need. Sure, because yeah, that. that's my snack. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. And what's next? Let's do a little bit of cheese. Okay. This is one of those times to use your hands. Uh, oh, that's oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's enough. Yeah. You see, I have a bit of a heavy hand anyway, <laughs> but yes, I will taste it. <laughs> okay. Delicious. Let's add these cashews here. Yeah, they're a little sticky, so yep. that's definitely finger food, right? Yes. There they are. Not quite all of them. Again, okay. it's about balancing the flavors and the textures. Now, how do you decide what goes on first, second, third, last? Well, the last elements are always going to be the hot elements, so they don't. There you go. Good. Yep. So they don't wilt the greens. So cold elements first, hot elements last. A little extra pepper because. Okay. All right. Fabulous. Can you see that? So this little side of my bird's nest opened up, but that's okay. Okay. Because it's going to be delicious. Because these are a little bit hot, I'm going to use my chef hands that are already. Like asbestos? Uh, let's not go that far. <laughs> mm. 
right. Now we've added asparagus. And then the lardone. Yep. Okay. Those are too hot for hands. So let's yeah. use this. Right. And that's looks it. Looks pretty delicious. All right, so this is Barbara's salad and this is our first course mm -hmm. to our three course meal. And coming up is our spicy, creamy bolognese pasta. Stay with us. Our water is boiling, now it's time to add salt. Okay, how much Salsier, salt? How much would you add? Well, you know, you asked me that question on the oil and I, I failed, I really failed that test. No, so, you didn't fail. Okay. No, you so, okay. can't fail something that no one's ever taught. Actually, well, there's that. So this was how I learned to do it. Fill the cup of your hand. So uh -huh. it's probably a teaspoon, right? right? Okay. Now, how much would you put in? Fantastic. We're going to... <laughs> dump half of that container in there. Pretty much. Wow. Again, you have one how shot of I flavor in your pasta. So the, the formula is one tablespoon per quart. Okay. So, All right. I will use that. Now we're going to... Now we've got fresh lingui uh, linguine. Linguine. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to lower the pasta in slowly, just in case we get a reaction and it bubbles over. And that's going to cook really quickly. As soon as that, as soon as it starts to float, it's done. Okay. So. And this is our spicy, minutes. creamy bolognese. Yes. So talk to us about the bolognese, because now we've got the pasta handled. Well, this is, I don't have favorite dishes that kind of goes against the way I, I believe in food. But this is my staff's favorite dish. And this is also a dish that I make when I've had a bad day. Oh. It takes a few hours to do all the things. And I forget what why I was mad up and I'm done. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm done and I have a delicious meal to follow and reward myself for being done. Exactly. So I'm good with that. So mm -hmm. what then makes this bolognese special? Because I know this is in the book and people can yeah. find it there. Well. I start with Salmazano tomatoes, and pretty much everyone who knows how to make bolognese starts with Salmazano. But then it's all about incorporating the uh, the culinary philosophy we explained earlier. Right. But starting with roasted garlic and uh, shallots and leeks and onions and everything starting there, and then blending that all up together and getting good meats and taking care of this. And one of the things that I do in this in this version, it's got uh, sous vide. Uh, country pork shoulder. Okay. That's cooked for 24 hours to be. Okay. Not everyone. Most people are not going to do that. So I what are my know. other alternatives? It's also got some roasted sausage in there okay. that you could do. Mm -hmm. You could also do this with like a vegetarian version and just do it with, uh, with hard sauteed mushrooms. Okay. Mm. I can totally do that. Or you can just do it with, with just the sauce and the cheese. All right. So basically it's the, the foundation of the flavor sensations. Yes. The garlic, the shallots, the onions. The leeks. The leeks. Yes. Don't forget the leeks. And then the tomatoes and cook them low and slow. Okay. Add lots and lots of cheese once it comes out of once it's done and after you've blended it. Okay. Um, and then you just add whatever meats you've got going. Now we've got two pots of, of pasta sauce going here. The first, the first sauce is our saute pan. And this is where we're going to mix the pasta in and roll the pasta up. And then our second one, this is our finishing pan for decoration. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Right. So do we Finish put a little bit on the bottom or just that goes on top? Okay. We're almost there with this pasta. It's just a little bit more time. How do you test it? Well, I can just look at it. Of course but you can. If, You're the yeah. chef, but how should I I've been, test I've it? I've been doing it a long time. Okay. Whoops. I pulled you one up. All right. Yep. Feisty guys. Yes. Hey. Yeah, they're not really having any part of this, are they? Okay. Okay, grab a whole bunch of them. All there right, we go. So just taste one. Okay. Show me. Yeah. It's hot. Ah, that's so hot. Yeah. That one's a little undercooked. That one's fully cooked. How do we know? The color. Okay. And when I see the difference right oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the end. a little bit chewy. Got it. The, the end, end yeah. isn't cooked yet. The middle is cooked. Yeah. Okay. So mm. fresh pasta takes what, three to four minutes? About, yeah. Okay, and then the box pasta is closer the, to... It depends, yeah. it depends on the shape, but whatever it says on the box, don't cook it that long. Okay. 
if it says seven to 10 minutes on the box, cook it for, cook it for five and taste it, and then cook it again for, go another minute. All right, we're gonna, we're almost done, which means we're, we're done because we're gonna let this finish cooking in the sauce. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Off we go. Ooh. Be careful doing this at home. All right, we're using the pasta puller instead of the colander because we want a little bit of that water, that pasta water. Pasta water's got lots and lots of flavor. And when you're cooking your sauce, it's going to, it's going to have some water and some liquid evaporate. Now, when our pasta's hot right now, this is when you are supposed to cheese your pasta. And yes, cheese is a verb. <laughs> Okay. We're using a very fine rasp grater here because the finer the grater on the cheese, the more it will melt into the pasta. And what we want to do here, and why we're cheesing now, is because the pasta is super hot. The cheese will help the sauce stick to the pasta itself. All right. Okay. So now we're just going to toss. All right. Let that go a minute to let it again finish cooking in the sauce. That's something that more people need to do. And letting and cheesing your pasta right when it hits the sauce is another thing that more people need to do. Most people want to put the cheese on at the end. Right, because it looks pretty. Right, but that's that's a problem. That's just for Instagram. That's not for it's not to help that the pasta itself. Okay. And also restaurants did, with the pepper thing, like, would you like some more cheese? No, I want it to come out of the kitchen properly seasoned. But your sister's partner who you don't even like that much, you don't want to have to explain to them at the table. Right. You're, you're only supposed to cheese in the so when, you, uh, when the pasta is the sauce. So okay. just cheese afterwards. It'll make life easier. Okay. Well, as long as you get the cheese in there, my theory is just get it there. Okay. So now we're going to take our tongs and get a big scoop of pasta. And so we're going to start, we're using a ladle to help us make a nice, really tight, I always wondered how Whoa, they did that. Exactly. Right. Oh my gosh. That's there. perfect. And then we take our second bowl for presentation. Uh, and top with more on. sauce instead of cheese. But even though it hurts my soul, we don't feel like fighting with their okay. sister's partner. So it's going to add a little bit more cheese. Okay. Done. Okay, we're definitely gonna have to eat, but not right now, because now we're moving on to dessert. Yes. Yes, because we've got a three course meal and we are on our way to a fantastic dessert. All right. So if you're in a hurry or you're not sure what to make, I can suggest that this is something you might not have thought about because I surely didn't. What are we making? We're gonna make a boozy Girl Scout milkshake. Boozy Girl Scout milkshake. I love all those words together. And it is super easy. I'm taking some mint chocolate chip ice cream. I let it get a little bit melty in the refrigerator to make it a little bit easier for me, sorry. And we're going to do two parts mint chocolate chip, one part whiskey, and we're done. That's it. Two parts mint chocolate chip ice cream, one part. One part whiskey. One part whiskey. What kind of whiskey? Now, I like to drink fancy whiskeys, but I don't cook with fancy whiskeys. Okay. So I put an expensive whiskey in fancy whiskey bottles. So this is a cheap whiskey. Okay, got it. All right. Got it. Then we're gonna blend this. I'm pretty excited. This is an amazing meal. Okay. Just ice cream. So it's just ice cream, no ice, no nothing. Ice cream and booze. Ice cream and booze. That's what, could it. Go, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> okay. And as they say, life is short. Eat dessert first. You didn't make enough for yourself. <laughs> Seems so unfair. <laughs> You'll be fine. Because <laughs> you know I have to taste this first. Yes. Oh my God. 
I need a bigger straw, but oh my God. Mint chocolate chip ice cream and booze. Do it to taste. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> makes you happy. Danny Boylan from CE Saute and now an inappropriate amount of butter. Thank you so very much. This has been an experience. And I know, pleasure. I know our viewers are just gonna love to go out and find the cookbook and start working on these recipes. Thank you so much, and we'll be right back.